Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, we are forgiven. By Jesus, we are welcomed. In Jesus, we are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share the peace. Peace be with you. Oh my God, peace. Peace of the Lord. Be with you. Thank you. Thank you. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O oh God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please let us stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. 
Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of those who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And these will go away into the eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Oh, there it is. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <coughs> hmm? Oh, yes, ch ch children. Please come up. Good morning. It's kind of cold, isn't it? Yeah. You know, uh, do you know what a king is? How many of you have heard of a king? He's like a, a ruler. He's a person that's in charge of a, of a whole country of people, you know? And he tells them to do this, and they do it, and so forth and so on. He's called a king. Now, do you know what a king wears? What does a king wear? What's one of the things he, he wears on his head? The crown, yes. He wore a crown. And you know, this is Christ the King Sunday, and so we celebrate Jesus as a king. And he's got to have a crown. But you know... Jesus was a very different kind of king. He didn't count you being the top chief as, as something that, that he wanted, but he was a servant. You know, a servant is somebody that helps people, takes care of them. And he was so good at it that he died for us on the cross. And the people gave him this as a crown. not very pretty is it but that's not the end of the story because god loved us to give his son up for us yes but he loved his son too and because he did what god asked him god gave him another crown would you like to get the crown would you like to get the crown? Back there? can you get it grace can you, can you want to get it You sure? Yeah. I didn't want to climb these stairs. <laughs> yeah, he got a crown like this. And you know, when we die and we go to heaven, because we have believed in Jesus and trusted him, we get a crown too. 
And that's one of the things to remember on Christ the <coughs> King Sunday. Let's pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, through your Son, you teach us that glory is, is, is being the kind of person that serves your people as best as we can. Give us the heart to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I keep forgetting you. And <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'll start on this end. Grace? You want to sit there? Della, you want to sit there? You're welcome. Oops. You want to sit there? Do what? Good. Oh, somebody's lost a shoe. Lost a slipper. You going to a ball later? Huh? <laughs> You'll be the bell of the ball. There once was a little boy who wanted to meet God. And uh, he knew that that would probably take a while, I mean, take some distance away. And so he decided to pack in a suitcase his favorite foods, Twinkies and cans of root beer. Well, after saying goodbye to his mom, telling her where she, he was going, to meet God, he was off. And he had gotten just a few blocks from home when he encountered this elderly lady sitting on a bench in a park. And she looked very sad and lonely. So he went up and he sat right next to her. And she, he asked her, he said, would you like a Twinkie? And she said, yes, I would. And when he gave her uh, one of the Twinkies, she had this most beautiful smile on her face. And the boy was so pleased with that smile that he wanted to see it again. And so he said, would you like a root beer? Yes, I'd love a root beer. And when he gave her the root beer, his smile was just as good as the first one. Yeah. They sat on that bench all afternoon didn't say a word to each other, just sat there and watched the pigeons walking in front of them until it was time for the little boy to go home. And as he walked away, he got oh, just a few steps, turned around, ran back to that elderly lady and gave her the biggest hug he could. And she smiled big time. It was the best one yet. And then he went home. And when he got home, his mom asked him, well, did you have an eventful day today? And he said, yes, I had lunch with God. And when the woman got home, her son was there, and she looked happier. And he said, you look so ha happier, happy today. Did something happen on, in your journey today? And, and she said, yes, I ate Twinkies with God. And you know, He's a lot younger than I expected. <laughs> How'd you like to meet God? I think that would be kind of neat. Well, don't you think so? Huh? And there's various ways of doing that. We can meet God by ourselves. You know, Jesus tells us to. He says, well, when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray in secret. 
Don't pray like the hypocrites do. That they just make it a show of it, you know. Pray in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Jesus himself practiced that, too. He was always going off to some mountain somewhere by himself to, to pray. So, so we can meet God in prayer, can't we? We can meet God in Bibles, in reading the Bible, too. We can meet God alone, or we can meet God together as we pray together, as we learn together, as we worship together. You know, Jesus taught in the synagogues and in the temple in Jerusalem. Great crowds of people around him. So we can meet God together, too, can't we? But we can also meet God by helping people. Jesus, of course, who is God, he said, Blessed are you, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I needed clothes, you gave me the clothes. When I was in prison, you visited me in prison. When I was sick, you cared for me. In these acts of compassion, he's telling them that we're meeting God. You know, that seems such just a wonderful thing to do. But can it get to be kind of a burden, you think? There was a man who was talking to a friend of his, and his friend asked him, he said, have you been saved? Have you turned your heart and life over to God? And the man said, well, I, I would, but he never comes alone. He brings so many others with him, people that need help. <laughs> and there's a lot of those folks, too, aren't there? But perhaps the most distressing news of all is uh, when we meet God and it's, it's time for his judgment. There were those folks that didn't do these things that give food to the hungry and water to the thirsty and clothes to those that needed them. And, and what does it say? Well, the righteous ones that did these things, well, they're, they have a place in, in God's heavenly kingdom, but they... The others, he says, they are accursed. Kind of a hard sentence, isn't it? When I was in so sophomore in high school, I took a class, English class. The whole semester was all about writing a term paper. You had to pick a topic. You had to do research. And then you uh, took notes, and out of your notes, you created an outline, and then you had a first draft. And then you had the final draft that included footnotes and a bibliography. And we spent the whole semester writing a term paper. Now, all throughout the class, the teacher kept saying, you must turn in your final paper on Wednesday, March 22nd. Do not be late. I do not accept late papers. If you don't turn it in on that day, you fail. Guess who didn't get his paper done on time? I had done everything to perfection. And for some reason that I still am not aware of, I just neglected to turn in the paper on time. And when the teacher came around to the class to collect the papers, 
He said, Mr. Merkel, where's your paper? Well, I, I haven't got it quite done yet, uh, but I'll get it to you. No, don't bother, because I won't accept it. Went home to my father. Oh, my gosh. Talk about fury. He was livid. You worked all semester on this, and the most important part, you didn't turn in on time, and you knew when the time was that you were supposed to. What was going through your mind? And I'm thinking, well, I don't really have one. He said, all right, sit down and write the paper. Dad, he's not going to accept the paper. I don't care. You're going to write that paper. And so I did. And when it came to the class and I turned it in, he said, well, the teacher said, well, I will, I will uh, read it. I'll read it. But you know right now what your grade is going to be. Yes, sir. And sure enough, when he distributed the papers to the class a few days later, you know, he came up to me and he said, Mr. Merkel, this is what you would have gotten had you turned the paper in on time. And it was a very good grade. That just added insult to injury. Oh. All because I procrastinated. Yeah. I did receive a reprieve, however, and my reprieve was summer school, in which I took the course over again. Aced it. <laughs> you know, when we're punished that way, do you think that really it really does is the job, always. D does it change a person's attitude or his behavior? <laughs> Did it make me less of a procrastinator? Sorry to say no. That's still one of my character defects. You know, I think God is kind of aware of that. And I think that God's grace and mercy is limitless. And I think that he put that stipulation in the gospel just so that we would take our, this life seriously. And to, when we reach a point when we are absolutely desperate, we have nothing to rely on, then we turn to him. And we can because Jesus has already written the paper for you. He's already done the work that you needed to do. And, and he, he's not late. He, he did it 2,000 years ago. On time for you and me. And that's good news. How do I respond to that? Well, I could probably be a little less of a procrastinator in the first place. But also to realize that God is not giving us an overwhelming task. It seems overwhelming, doesn't it? Remember I said earlier that the gentleman that he was asked if he gave his heart to Jesus, he said, well, I, I really would, but he never comes alone. He brings all these people that are needy with him, you know. But there's a story that Mother Teresa lived it. She actually lived it. And there was a time that, that uh, somebody asked her about her work and how she endured it because it was so strenuous and there were so many needy people in India. And she said, I just don't focus on the masses. I focus on the individual. I do it one person at a time. And then I move to the next person and the next person. If I focus on the, the masses that's there, I would not do what I do. Wouldn't have the strength for it. But I focus on one person at a time. I enjoy it when I I realize that God is focusing on me and has promised me that he will complete 
what he began in my life in baptism so many years ago. And I will not with dread or anxiety approach God, whether it's at his table or whether it's at his throne, that I will with confidence and, jo and joy end up my meeting with God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand. forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers after each petition, the congregation's response to hear us, O God, is your mercy is great. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, from Christ we receive our call to feed and clothe and welcome. Direct your church to respond to this call with faithfulness and generous love. We pray for the work of the ELCA World Hunger and partnerships with Global Feeding Ministries. Hear us, O oh God. In Christ, the rock of our salvation, we are brought into union with all of creation, with mountains, seas, dry lands, and animals of the field. We seek your guidance and protection. Hear us, O oh God. In Christ we know merciful judgment. Guide rulers of every nation in ways of humble leadership and wise decision making. Allow aid to come to all who are underserved and care to any who are neglected. Hear us, O oh God. In Christ we feel the depth of your love and care toward us. Nourish all who hunger, connect any who are isolated, surround all who experience rejection or abuse. We pray especially for those that we lift up to you from our hearts at this time. Chuck and Jeannie.
Hear us, O God. In Christ, we are made the people of his pastor. Inspire the outreach and social ministries of this congregation. We're especially grateful for those who participated in the Thanksgiving event last Sunday. And the food that was poured in was so generous. Hear us, O God. Holy God in Christ, we are welcomed home. We praise you for the faithful witness of those who have served you and extended your welcome and love to us. Unite us with them as one body of Christ. Hear us, O God. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, may we feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, breath of life and fire of hope, with a mighty wind you brought creation into being, and by a pillar of fire, you led your people into freedom. We praise you for the gift of your son who poured out your spirit on his disciples of every race and nation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and the sending of the holy and life-giving spirit, we await his coming again to renew the face of the earth. Send now your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this meal. Anoint us with your gifts of faith and hope and love, that with thankful hearts we may be witnesses to your Son, Jesus. To him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The communion assistance, please come forward. who are communing with the pre-filled packets, please take your packet now and open the top and take the bread, for this is the body of Christ given for you. Those who are worshiping with us online, do the same. And now the cup, which is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please come, come to the table of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason for re to rejoice and be glad the blessings of God. Savior, Sovereign, and Spirit, may these be with you today and always. Amen. Amen.
beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.